I'm Dr. Cleet Griffin. I'm a faculty member of the College of Veterinary Medicine at Texas A&M University. The purpose of this presentation is to emphasize some important information related to the areas of oral examination and routine dental maintenance procedures in horses. In order to demonstrate some important anatomic considerations, we have a couple of skulls that we're going to utilize that have been specially prepared. Uh, the first skull has the bones of the cheeks that have been cut away in order to demonstrate these long crown cheek teeth, which are known as hypsodont teeth. These are very important. Horses evolved as animals that graze and chew many hours per day, and as a result, there is attrition that occurs at the chewing surface of the teeth. As an adaptation, in order to maintain normal chewing function, these long crown hypsodont teeth continually erupt up until the horse is aged into the 20s, and this continual eruption helps maintain normal chewing function for the horse. The second skull that we have has had the incisor bones removed in order to demonstrate uh, the differing widths between the upper and the lower jaws of the horse. The term for the differing width is anisonadia, and again, it's a very important consideration. Because of the chewing motion of the horse, the horse's anatomy, as well as the continual eruption of the cheek teeth, it creates a situation where sharp edges develop along the outsides of the upper cheek teeth and along the inside of the lower cheek teeth. These sharp points can traumatize and irritate the tongue and the oral soft tissues and create discomfort and undesirable behavior when the horse is being used in performance or cause discomfort when the horse is chewing and eating. The dental speculum allows the mouth to be propped open safely. It allows a hand or instruments to be safely passed into the mouth. Uh, frequently as part of the exam, veterinarians will use a dental mirror to examine the chewing surface of the cheek teeth. If there are areas of the crown that appear to be damaged or decayed, uh, instruments like a dental explorer can be passed safely to check the areas of the crown uh, that appear to be diseased. Prior to administering sedative or analgesic injections for the oral examination and dental procedures, we think it's uh, best for veterinarians to attempt to determine the horse's overall health status through obtaining a proper medical history and performing an examination of the horse prior uh, to giving the medications. We have a patient here, uh, this is Aggie. She's about an 18-year-old quarter horse mare. She's part of our uh, teaching herd here and as part of her uh, health maintenance procedures, she's in the hospital today uh, for annual oral examination and, and any dental uh, maintenance procedures that she needs. Important components of the medical history uh, that the veterinarian will try to determine include uh, any past medical problems uh, that the horse has had. It should include any medications uh, that the horse is currently taking. And the veterinarians will also take into consideration the horse's performance schedule and any upcoming uh, events where there may be uh, testing for uh, drugs and things like that that might occur at the event. We like to take the horse's uh, temperature rectally and determine that the horse has normal body temperature. We will generally estimate the horse's body weight, estimate the horse's body condition score, and uh, go through uh, the components of the exam. Once it's been determined uh, that everything looks good, then we feel it's safe to administer the medications to the horse. In order to do that, there are a number of medications that veterinarians commonly administer for oral examination. Uh, the first ones that we have uh, to show you are detomidine and xylazine. These drugs are known as alpha-2 agonists. They have very potent physiologic uh, sedative and analgesic effects on the horse. There's also risk uh, for human injury when handling these drugs if accidental self-injection occurs or if a spray of the medication occurs uh, into the mouth or, or eyes or other types of mucous membranes. Another drug that's commonly used by veterinarians uh, in performing oral examination to facilitate the procedure is butorphanol. Butorphanol is an opioid drug. It provides uh, excellent analgesia for the horse. Because it's controlled substance, uh, there's special paperwork that's required from the Drug Enforcement Agency and Department of Public Safety in order to handle and uh, use that type of drug. In the event it becomes necessary to reverse the tranquilization or sedative effects of the alpha-2 agonist drugs, veterinarians will have medications such as tolazine that are available to do that quickly. Some procedures can cause a significant amount of discomfort, such as an extraction of a cheek tooth. In these cases, veterinarians have uh, local anesthetic agents available uh, to provide additional analgesia through uh, local infiltration or through uh, doing some type of regional nerve block. And after the procedures are completed, especially procedures uh, where discomfort postoperatively might be involved, 
uh, veterinarians will have available medications such as phenylbutazone or banamine to provide analgesia after the procedure. Those uh, medications are generally administered uh, by intravenous injection in the jugular vein. There is risk associated with that injection if it's performed improperly. There's an artery that lies in very close proximity to the vein, and if the medication is accidentally injected into the artery instead of the vein, the horse will immediately seizure and collapse, and the horse could be severely injured or suffer permanent damage from that event. And in the event that accidental uh, intra-arterial injection occurs, immediate intervention by the veterinarian will be necessary. Once the physical examination is completed, the next step is to obtain a preliminary look into the mouth. The way that's done uh, when the unsedated horse is to just gently uh, grab the lip and retract the cheek with a small light source. Horses have a threshold of fear, anxiety, or discomfort that will be tolerated. And once that threshold is exceeded, you may initiate a flight response from the horse, which can be a very sudden, violent attempt for the horse to leave the situation. When that occurs, the horse could be seriously injured or could injure bystanders that are near the procedure. In order to administer the intravenous injection properly, uh, the veterinarian should first wipe the skin with alcohol. Uh, Aggie weighs about 1,350 pounds, so we've calculated uh, the proper dose of xylazine to administer. So we'll occlude the vein and uh, visualize where it's located just under the skin, and then we'll give the injection. Uh, once the needle's uh, into the vein, we can verify that uh, because there'll be blood that's going to come back into the syringe. So we know we're uh, in the proper location. We're using a proper technique, so we know we're not in the artery. And we'll pause for just a few minutes, uh, and in about two or three minutes, Aggie will be very sedate and tranquil. Prior to uh, placing the dental speculum and light source in the mouth, it's important to uh, irrigate uh, the feed material out of the oral cavity to improve visualization. We we'll use a dose syringe to do that. We we'll use a special solution, and it contains chlorhexidine as an oral rinse. Uh, this will help with any scratches or irritation that occurs during the procedures. It'll also help keep our instruments clean and hopefully prevent any disease transmission between patients. It's been about five minutes since we administered the intravenous injection of xylazine to Aggie. Uh, she's very sedate, very tranquil, very relaxed. We've applied a dental halter to help support her head at an appropriate height. We've gone ahead and placed the dental speculum and uh, secured the strap, and we've placed the light source that we're gonna use for the oral examination. So at this point, we'd like to get the mouth opened up and demonstrate some of the components of the exam and demonstrate some of the instruments that we use uh, for routine dental maintenance procedures, such as dental flotation. First step is to open the speculum slightly and make sure that the horse is gonna be tolerant of uh, having the mouth open. Check and make sure the tongue's not trapped, make sure the lips, everything looks okay. Everything's fine, so we're gonna open up the speculum just wide enough where we can get a good look inside the mouth and pass a hand into the mouth to palpate the teeth. Okay, all that looks pretty good. So we get the cheeks retracted and we'll take a look in here. Um, it's pretty evident right off the bat that Aggie is missing an upper right first molar. And as a result, uh, as we talked about earlier, there's continual eruption of the cheek teeth. So the opposing tooth, the lower right first molar has become overgrown and uh, that can impair uh, chewing function, impair mobility of the mandible. There's a number of sharp points that are present within the mouth. And so she's a good, uh, good candidate to be here in the hospital today uh, to have some dental work performed. In order to help uh, remove and smooth some of the sharp points in Aggie's mouth, there's a couple of options we have. One option is to use uh, some type of hand file to help smooth these points. So there's different lengths and different types of configurations of hand files depending on uh, what portion of the mouth is being worked on. What we're gonna do first here with this file is we're just gonna demonstrate this uh, on one side of the lower cheek teeth. We're gonna take the file and place it in the mouth and uh, get this in the appropriate position. We'll just make some nice little short pull strokes with the file. in with the hand just to verify that the floating procedure has been successful and everything feels pretty good on that side. 
Another option when filing uh, over long teeth or sharp points in horses uh, includes motorized instruments. Uh, this is an example of a power instrument that has a, a rotary uh, disc, a carbide chip blade. It's a variable speed. This blade is guarded and so it's uh, fairly safe uh, for uh, cause, causes very little trauma uh, to the oral soft tissues when used properly. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, Aggie has a missing uh, upper cheek tooth and so the opposing lower cheek tooth is over long and so we're going to use this motorized instrument to help reduce the length of the lower cheek tooth. And we'll place this in the mouth and just, we'll just turn the motor on and see how she tolerates that. She seems okay with it. Now we'll place it on the near the overlong tooth. Now a little bit more length needs to come off. Uh, you don't want to stay on uh, the tooth too long with a motorized instrument because it could uh, heat the tooth improperly and cause damage. So we'll work in a different area of the mouth for a few minutes. For the purposes of the presentation, we did not film the entire dental procedure for Aggie, but we've taken care of all of her dental arcades and everything looks good. We've taken great care to minimize trauma to the oral soft tissues and to the teeth. And with any dental case, we want to avoid unnecessary complications such as excessive bleeding, infection, facial swelling, or pain. I'm Dr. Cleet Griffin. I'm a diplomate of the American Board of Veterinary Practitioners. I've enjoyed presenting the information to you today about equine dentistry.